Assalamu alaikum, everyone. My name is Hussein. It's been a while since I've given a speech, so hopefully you'll be entertained. If I see you looking at your phone or falling asleep, I'll either point in your direction if I don't know your name, and if I do know your name, I'll call you out. All right? <laughs> so the topic of my speech is the ultimate record, right? Almighty God, chapter 6, verse 59. With him are the keys to all secrets. None knows them except he. He knows everything on land and in the sea. Not a leaf falls without his knowledge, nor is there a grain in the depths of the soil, nor is there anything wet or dry that is not recorded in a profound record. Right? So we're talking about God's record. The record that God has created from the beginning of time. Before humans even existed, God has been recording everything that has happened. Now, before I talk about us as individuals, I think it's important to have some context. And I want to start, start, start from day one, <laughs> hopefully. There we go. OK, cool. So who has seen the show Cosmos? OK, a handful of people. OK, good. I feel better now. For those of you who've seen it, now you know the next five minutes of my speech. But for those of you who haven't, essentially the, the history of the universe is over the course of 13 billion some odd years. Now that really doesn't mean much to any of us, right? It's kind of hard to conceptualize that. So if you were to take those, that time period and put it on a 365 day calendar, this is essentially what it would look like. January 1st would be the Big Bang, right? So day one is when the Big Bang happens and everything comes into existence. And December 31st is where we are today, now. So I'm not going to go too much, too much detail here, but to kind of help you get some perspective here, every month is roughly about a billion years, OK? Every day is 40 million years. If we were to say from the beginning of time, when the Big Bang happened, on January 10th, these clumps of gas that existed with gravity coalesced together and started forming the first stars. Now, we know God in the Quran tells us that stars, are, they have souls, right? They were creatures of God that um, repented and reformed in the high society. So the first stars started forming billions of years ago, right? On March 15th, on the cosmic calendar, that's when galaxies started being created. These, forms started, these stars started forming groups which created galaxies. Hundreds of billions of stars existed at this point. Hundreds of billions. Human beings don't even, aren't even on the spectrum yet. As we fast forward through time, there are decillions of heavenly bodies. Messenger of the Covenant talks about this in the appendix. Decillions is 10 with 33 zeros after it, right? I, I, I can't fathom that number, right? Still no humans. Our sun did not exist until August 31st, right? So January 1st, the Big Bang happens. Our sun did not exist until roughly about this time period, right? That's four and a half billion years ago. Now let's fast forward. So on December 29th, of this cosmic calendar, dinosaurs still walked on the planet, right? Humans did not exist. December 29th, still no sign of human beings, right? Dinosaurs. In fact, humans did not come into existence until the last 14 seconds on December 31st, right? So seconds until midnight, that's when human beings came into existence. And if we look at that in perspective, that means that Moses was born about seven seconds ago, Jesus was born about five seconds ago, Muhammad about two seconds ago, right? So you're starting to get some idea that really our history is close to nothing, right? And God had recorded all of this information before humans even existed, right? All those creatures that God knew were forgiven existed even before 14 seconds, right?
And God knew the first 364 days of this cosmic calendar were, was for the purpose of the creatures that were forgiven, right? And obviously they still continue. Okay, let's see if this works. Uh-huh, okay. So I want to take that 14 seconds and I want to kind of expand on it a little bit here. So we know that Adam, give or take, existed about 13,000 years ago. We know that Messenger of the Covenant talks about Noah being between 10 to 12,000 years. And then in the book of Genesis, we know that the difference in time between Adam and Noah was about 1,000 years, right? So rough estimation here, not perfect numbers. The icons that I have for some of the uh, messengers and prophets of God are actually referenced in the Quran. But the reason I have this slide up here is I want to give a contextual idea of how humans started recording information, right? So before, we know that Abraham had a practical scripture, right? It was not a written scripture. It was practical. So before Abraham, or I guess even during Abraham's time, the only way of keeping records was through storytelling. People would share information with one another by telling stories. On top of that, they had some crude, primitive drawings as well. But there was no such thing as written language at that time. So in 3200 BC, which was very soon after Abraham's existence, was the first uh, recorded information of written text, right? And that happened to be modern-day Iraq. Soon after that, we know that Moses came after Abraham. And Moses was given a statute book, right? He was given written instruction on tablets, right? So Abraham had no writing. Writing happened, and then Moses was given a written scripture. And then we fast forward. Not much changed for a long time, right? Moses came, Jesus came, Muhammad came. It was still just written text. And then the first photograph was taken in 1826. Soon after that, in 1877, the first recording device was made for audio. And then in 1951 was video, right? So we're seeing in the last 200 years, technology moved very quickly. We were able to start recording information better. And then now, we live in the world of data, right? Everything you do is being watched by Facebook. Uh, <laughs> but what's interesting is all of these ways of recording information, whether it's text, whether it's pictures, whether it's a video, they all have certain flaws that I'm going to go into. So what kind of types of records exist, right, as far as humans are concerned? Well, we have our educational records, right, our grades. You have your credit score, your financial records, right? That's a dream right there. Uh, in fact, the grades and the financial score are dreams. Uh, you might have a criminal history. I don't know. I hope not. <clears throat> Maybe some health records. And I'm sure everyone in this room, in some way, shape, or form, has a record of their online activity somewhere. Uh, uh, interestingly enough, for those of you who remember a time when you couldn't, or parents, I'm sure, uh, when grades were mailed home, my parents never got those grades. Uh, it's weird, right? Like, so when we talk about ways of keeping records of information, we see that each of these have fundamental flaws, right? If you're mailed your grades home, well, maybe the medium in which you receive that information might be tampered with by a certain somebody, we don't know, uh, <laughs> right? And then you think about like, things like Facebook, right? Facebook, essentially, what people see of you is what you want them to see, right? It's a very biased view. I'm going way over, five minutes. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> so, right, it's what, what people want you to see of them. So very quickly, you're seeing that all these ways of record keeping are incomplete, right? We try to use all of these to understand who we are, right? What makes us Hussein, right? Well, not us, but me. <laughs> right? And then on top of that, pictures can be manipulated, videos can be manipulated, right? If you're a victim of fraud, your credit score might be changed in a way that you have no control over, 
right? So each of these record keepings have inaccuracies. I hope you can see where I'm going with this. And your records follow you. No, no. No matter where you go, when something is on the internet, everyone will see it, right? For those of you who don't know, these two beautiful souls, LP, Wamid, put your hands up. I see LP there. Wamid, where are you? Here you go. Yeah, whatever you post, <laughs> it follows you, remember. <laughs> and these are just human records. No, 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 too late. You missed your chance. <laughs> uh, okay. So I want to talk a little about human behavior. I'm going to start going quickly here. Um, <laughs> thank you, Elfie and Wami, for being good sports. I, I got their per written permission before that. So uh, human, human characteristics is interesting. So we obviously know that God is, we tell ourselves that God is watching us, right? Recording everything that we doing, we're doing. Now, there was two experiments that were done. One happened in the mid, uh, early 1990s, where I know we don't celebrate Halloween, but it happened with children. And what essentially they did is, during the trick-or-treating season, they had three homes, okay? So the first home the kids would come to, Someone would open the door, they would hold out the candy, and, the, and it happened to be that the kids on their own, without being told anything, only took one piece of candy, okay? So then they went to the next home. The next home had a jar sitting outside, so there was no one that actually opened the door for them. And the jar just had a sign that said, please take one, right? Do you think the kids took one? No way. They shoveled it into their bags, right? <laughs> right? So now the third home had the same jar, but there was a mirror on the opposite side of the jar, right? So the kids would see their own reflection. What do you think the kids did? Do you think they took one or do you think they took all of them? They took one, right? So it's interesting that human beings have this dynamic inside of them where they understand that when they're being watched, they're more careful about what they're doing, right? And this isn't just for kids, by the way. They did a similar experiment with adults in the workplace. Right? They happened to see that when the boss was in the office, right, and also visible to their employees, their employees happened to be more productive right, and spend less time on Facebook and Reddit. So it's just, it's, it's interesting, or, or Discord for some of us. <laughs> but what's interesting is that we're seeing that whether you're a submitter or not, having this concept of someone watching you changes your behavior. Okay. So let's talk about the record that matters, right? So we talked about 365 days of the cosmic calendar. All those creatures in the 364 days were already forgiven. The last 14 seconds. What is the purpose of the last 14 seconds? God says that he did not create all of this for vanity and play, right? There's a purpose behind it. Chapter 10, verse 61, God tells us that there is nor is there anything smaller than an atom or larger that is not recorded in a profound record. In chapter 50, verse 16, he tells us, we created the human and we know what he whispers to himself. We are closer to him than his jugular vein. Serena, can you stand up? Stand. 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 Stand up. Now, I want you to point. No, not you. Okay, sorry. Please, sit down. <laughs> Okay, Serena, I want you to point to the general area where your jugular vein is. I want you to put your hand there. Okay, I want everyone to put their hand where Serena has theirs. Feel that. Okay, God is closer to you than the things even inside of your own body, right? That should give you perspective that God's watching everything. Now, God tells us in chapter 15, or 50, 17, and 18, that he has his angels, right? They're tasked with duties. To, there's one on the left and the right recording everything, nor not an utterance does he utter without an alert witness, okay? There's going to be no time for questions. Sorry, guys. In chapter 4, verse 81, God says he records your innermost intentions, right? Only God knows your innermost intentions, right? 78, 29, we counted everything in a record, everything, right? 
In, in 58.6, it says, A day will come when God will resurrect them all, then inform them of everything they had done. God has recorded everything while they have forgotten it. God witnesses all things. Okay, let's do a little funnel experiment here. It's going to be individual. So think back on what you had at breakfast today. Right? Easy. Yesterday? Probably still remember, unless you're carrying because he has like eight meals a day. <laughs> what about last week? Can you remember? A year ago? You're starting to see, right? That even something as simple as a breakfast, right, we lose track of. But God says he records everything, right? Everything. So even things that we forget, right, even things that we think is not a big deal, God has recorded all of it. So who are the winners, right? So let's now talk in context of our souls, right? The things that really matter to us. So God tells us that God erases whatever he wills and he fixes. With him is the original master record. Two minutes, I got it. I got five minutes on mine. So, uh, so God erases whatever he wills and he will fix it. He says, as for those who work righteousness while believing, their works will not go to waste. We are recording it, Right? So for us who are putting in the hard work in this life, God rewards us. He says nothing goes to waste. This is the believers, this is those who reverence their Lord will be led to paradise and throngs. When they get to it and its gates are open to them, to them, its guards will say, peace be upon you, you have won. Therefore you abide herein forever. They will say, praise be to God who fulfilled his promise to us and made us inherit the earth Enjoying paradise as we please, what a beautiful recompense for the workers, the believers. As for the one who receives his record with his right hand, he will say, come read my record. I did, I did believe that I was going to be held accountable. He has deserved a happy life in an exalted paradise. We should live our lives that we, in a way that we know that we are going to be held accountable. Because when no one else is around us, God is with us. God is holding us accountable. Now, what we don't want to be like are the losers, right? What's the difference in reaction? The record will be shown. They will find what they had done brought forth. Their skins, why did you bear witness against us? They will reply, God made us speak up. He is the one who causes everything to speak. He is the one who created you the first time, and now you have been returned to him. There is no way you can hide from your own hearing, your eyes, or your skins. In fact, you thought God was unaware of much of what you do. That kind of thinking about your Lord will cause you to fall, and then you become losers, right? If we lose that, pers that perspective, if we forget that God is aware of everything we are doing, God tells us we will become losers, Right? So we need to be vigilant of ourselves. And as one of our dear brothers, Wamid, says, what really matters, right? So I hope at the end of this, what you guys take away from what I'm trying to get across to you is our records are very important to us, right? And the record that we want God to present to us, back to us on the day of resurrection, should be one that we see as befitting of a believer. Thank you. All right, so we'll, no questions. we're going to take two to three questions, and then we're going to move on to the next speaker. So, okay, start with Solomon. Mashallah, excellent speech. Can we see that picture again? No. <laughs> <laughs> questions left, Solomon. <laughs> <laughs> Who, anyone else? It was that good. No questions required. Anyone thought that calendar was weird? No? Okay. Fear is a genetic question. Thank you, Hussein. That was great. I just uh, at the beginning of your speech, you said something about the in chapter fifty-seven, verse twenty-two, that everything that happens on planet Earth and to you, to us, has been recorded even before the creation. Correct. My understanding is that this record that God has, the master record, 
um, even before time, before, uh, because after Big Bang, uh, time started. So my understanding that um, it started even before time, not when time started. That's Absolutely. Says, yeah. Just to clarify, I'm full yeah. agreement with what Fears said. God's record, as far as God's concerned, everything's already happened, right? We're playing out a videotape, and that includes the Big Bang and everything that happened after that. As far as we're concerned, right, the record's being, it's happening to us as of today. Thank you. All right, so we're going to make this one good. <laughs> um, good speech, mashallah. Um, Thanks. I wanted to get your understanding on verse, on Surah 13, verse 39. Azza shaitan ar jim bismillah ar It says, God erases whatever he wills and fixes whatever he wills. With him is the original master record. I was wondering if you could elaborate on this in light of your topic. Sure. So, now this is purely my understanding. I'm open to being wrong here. I see that when God talks about that verse in the Quran, for example, we, uh, I see that there's a verse, and I'm going to paraphrase here, but essentially it says that believers suffer no humiliation on the day of resurrection, right? And the way I see that is that when we do something wrong in this life, we repent, we reform, God essentially tells us that he turns that sin to credit. But also I see that in your record, it's almost like it's whited out, right? Where that information will not be held against you on the day of resurrection, right? So when, he, when I see that he says he fixes it, whatever wrong we do that we repent and reform from in this life, God will see to it that it's not held against us. 